there are a couple of things you need to do on your Note 8 to make it more effective and work even better for you. So I'll get right into it. Firstly, you'll notice that while you're using the Note 8 and reading something or browsing through Instagram, it'll just time out automatically and lock your screen. Not sure why Samsung did not default smart state to be on, but that's what you just need to do. Go into settings and look for smart stay. So you could just search smart stay and you just got to enable that setting. And now the front camera would know that you're looking at the screen and you're reading something or looking at something and it will not turn off. Secondly, the Note 8 ships with optimized performance setting. But that's not why you paid so much money. You want the best performance. So go into settings, device maintenance, and then into performance mode and switch it up to high performance. And you can see that it's already at optimized and that's because it wants to give you the most out of your battery. But you know, if you're not a battery miser and you know that you can charge it pretty often, just go ahead and change that. You would basically get the best performance in terms of processor, uh, you know, your display resolution and brightness. Next, you've got a large display on the Galaxy Note 8, but the default setting for zoom and font size is such that it looks like it's a low resolution display with large icons and fonts. Uh, you know, you can actually go ahead and reduce the zoom as well as the font size so that it looks like a larger screen and accommodates for more content and it looks much higher resolution. I'm just gonna switch the color mode just so that you know it's, it's clearer. So go into display and then screen zoom and font settings. Slide over screen zoom to small and font size between, you know, maybe tiny or a little bit more than tiny. And now when you go back, you'd see that the list is, is definitely longer. I mean, you can see much more on your display than you could uh, when the setting was on larger uh, font size. As much underrated the Samsung's theme store is, it's actually candy land for people looking for beautiful themes and wallpapers or even always on display screens for their new Note 8. The store is what would differentiate your Galaxy Note 8 from anyone else's around you. The themes and the wallpaper are specifically tuned for your Note 8 and they look fabulous. Try them on and see which ones you like. In fact, even for the ones that are not paid, you can try them before you buy them and then if you just like it, you can pay for it. Otherwise, there are a ton of free ones that you can download and apply. And you know, you've got these really nice, beautiful, always on displays as well. Again, free and the paid ones. Next, the Note 8 comes with a new version of always on display, which is brighter than the one that you saw in the S8. Which means when you're about to go to sleep, then it's going to be like a night lamp next to your bed unless you keep your phone upside down, which can cause unnecessary scratches on your display. Now, you can either turn it off manually each time by pulling down the notification panel and you know toggling it from there or you could just automate it by going into lock screen and security settings and then look for always on display so and when you go there you could actually set a period for which you want uh, the always on display to work so you can set your schedule for the always on display tap that and you can set what time it should start and what time it should end and then the rest of the time when you're sleeping it's basically off the next one is to set up find my mobile Hopefully you'll never need this because it could be a heart attack if you lost your Note 8, but even more of a reason to do this. Just go into uh, lock screen and security and then go into find my mobile and enable remote controls, Google location service and send last location. You're just going to need your Samsung account for this. So make sure you've got one set up for yourself and you can go into that URL at the top and find it for yourself. The edge screen is again something very underrated. There is so much use of this nifty little thing here. I used it for three to four things. Okay, so for the first one is direct dials. I mean, there's just a handful of people you want to call all the time and you want to be able to call them extremely easily. The next I have is a calculator. And tell me how many times you go to your app drawer just to hunt for this simplest thing ever. So you can, you can actually just download one from the, from the uh, Edge store or the Galaxy app store and you can install it and you can have it activated over here. And the third one I have uh, is my music player. So, you know, every time I want to switch up my uh, track or I want to play a playlist, I don't have to go all the way inside the music player. I can do it from here itself. But again, you can have quite a few of these panels enabled and place them in an order that you prefer for easy access. And to do that, just swipe your um, edge panel, go into settings and you can see all the ones that you've got. 
and you can download even more of those from that button right there. And if you want to reorder them, you know, you want to have your own preference, what you want to see first, you could just reorder it by dragging your fingers around. Next is creation of multi-window combinations. And this is not for everyone, actually. For example, I make a lot of notes while watching videos. So I tend to have my Samsung notes open while at the same time I have a YouTube video playing on top. And, you know, while the video is playing on, I can very easily uh, resize my windows and I could just take down a note uh, or, you know, a couple of notes while I'm watching the video, right? So my combination is always ready. And to do this, I just, you know, I got to go on the tap on the plus icon over there in the apps edge panel. And then there is this button called uh, a call to action called create app pair. You can choose first the app that needs to be on top and then the app that needs to be right below that. And you can switch it, of course, if you want to. And once you're done, you just, just tap done and it, you know, it's created already over there. And then if you go, it exists right there. You can just tap on it and the combination will open up. The last one is about enabling pop-up view. This is disabled by default, but I think it's, it's really handy and a very good feature to have on your fingertips. Pop-up view, uh, it lets you pop up an app in a smaller view. Uh, it's, it's a mobile small view and you can continue to do something else in another app while that one's active. For example, I've got this email app. I can resize it by dragging it from the diagonal uh, corner. And I can still use it if I want. At the same time, I can have another application running right behind that uh, and I can continue to do whatever I want um, while I'm using, you know, so it's like using two apps at the same time, uh, one over the other. Interestingly, I can also Put this down as a bubble only so you know for example you're using whatsapp and you can just minimize it to a pop-up view uh, and you can tap on it it opens up you can talk to your friend and then just go back to whatever you were doing so those were some of the things that i think you need to do first when you get your galaxy note 8 a quite a few of those are actually disabled by samsung by default and i think you should just go ahead and enable those for yourself if you know of any interesting things do let me know in the comment section below do not forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching guys. See you soon.